Now, isn't it crazy to think that sound is invisible to the naked eye? However, our ears amazingly are able to interpret these invisible vibrations and allow me to communicate to you through a screen. Hi and welcome back. My name is Maddie and I'm a doctor from the UK. This video is a follow-up from my last Dr. Stone video where we looked at the sense of sound and how voice is created and how it can be manipulated to impersonate others. Now, if you haven't seen that video, why not go across and watch that video after this one? I'll leave the link down below. And following on from that video, today we're going to be looking at how we can hear sound. I'll also be talking about whether you can develop super hearing and whether sound can be weaponized like it was shown in the Dr. Stone anime. But before we go any further, why not subscribe to the channel so you don't miss out on any future videos like this. Now we know from our last video that sound is produced by the vibration of objects and it needs a medium for this sound to pass through that can be either liquid, solid or gas. Now depending on the medium that the vibrations are passing through, sound can either be muffled, distorted, refined or even amplified. But today's question is, how do we hear sound? Now clearly the simplest answer is through our ears. But how are our ears able to interpret the sound waves? To understand this, we have to gain some understanding as to how our ears work. Let's do that. So essentially, the ears are a sense organ that allow us to hear the sounds around us. But let's have a look at the different parts of the ear. To make it easier to understand, we can divide the ear down into three separate parts. The outer ear, the middle ear and the inner ear. The outer ear is called the pinna. It collects the sound from the surroundings. Now, the sound that has been collected from the outer ear travels through what's called the auditory canal of the ear. At the end of the auditory canal, there is a thin membrane called the eardrum or the tympanic membrane. As the sound reaches the eardrum, the eardrum begins to vibrate according to the sound it receives. These vibrations are increased several times over in the inner ear and this is facilitated by three very important bones. Malleus or hammer, the incus or the anvil, and lastly the stapes or stirrup. These three bones help the middle ear transmit this amplified signal to the inner ear where these sound signals get converted into electrical signals. These electrical signals are then sent to the brain via the auditory nerve and the brain interprets them as sound. That's how we hear. But is there such a thing as super hearing and can it be developed? Well, what we're seeing Okio do in this scene is practicing a skill that we all have, and that is our brain's ability to process where sounds are coming from in our environment. Now, our brains are amazing processors, and what they're able to do is interpret the sound that comes through both ears simultaneously to help locate where the sound is coming from in our environment. For example, a sound from directly in front of you will reach both your ears at the same time. You'll also hear it at the same intensity in each ear. However, a low frequency sound coming from one side will reach the near ear microseconds before the far one. Similarly, high frequency sounds will sound more intense to the near ear because the other one is blocked by the head. These strands of information reach special parts of the brainstem that analyze time and intensity differences between your ears. They send the results of their analysis up to the auditory cortex. Now the brain has all the information it needs to locate where those sounds are coming from. And this is a skill that you can practice. If you focus and concentrate your senses on one specific task, this whole process is far more enhanced. And I'm guessing that's how Okyo developed his super hearing. Now, 
Okay, so we've determined whether super hearing is possible, but what happens when hearing loss occurs? So hearing impairment occurs where there's a problem with either one or more parts of the hearing apparatus. So that's a problem with either the outer, the middle, or the inner ear. Other causes of hearing impairment might be related to being exposed to loud noises over prolonged periods of time, as well as things like infections or disease processes that affect the ear. And just lastly, and probably one of the most common causes of hearing impairment is age-related hearing loss. Now, total hearing loss or complete deafness tends to be a lot more rare, and usually if it does occur, then it's likely to have been a problem a person's had since birth. Now, fortunately, every baby in the UK gets their hearing tested within the first couple of days of being born. And what this allows us to do is identify if there's going to be any problems and start any treatment that we need to early on. And it is really important that we pick these problems up early on because we know that speech is directly related to the development of your hearing. And a child that has hearing loss might go on to have defective speech. But our next question was, can sound be weaponized like shown in the Dr. Stone anime? Well, yes, we do know that extremely loud sounds, such as that from an explosion, for example, can be really damaging to not only the eardrums, but also those three essential bones in the middle ear. And in fact, there was a piece of military equipment developed called LRAD, or Long Range Acoustic Hailing Device, which was initially developed to assist with communicating over long distances. However, it had also been used in the US by law enforcement, and they used this in the context of a protest getting out of hand and dangerous. And this is what one of the protesters had to say about this device. I'd rather be tased, shot with a rather a rubber bullet, maced, and then kicked in the balls, then have my eardrums erupted. But let's say you're worried about your hearing loss. How is hearing tested? Now, as a doctor in clinic, we often get patients presenting through with concerns about hearing loss, and there are many tests that we can perform on them. Now, in clinic, I can do a few little examinations of your ears just to make sure there's no obvious problems like wax in them, but the gold standard treatment is requesting an audiogram. Now, this is performed by a person sitting in a sound booth where they are exposed to a series of tones. Now, the patient holds a clicking button, which they press when they hear a tone. This can help establish what tones can and cannot be heard and whether there is true hearing loss. So, what can be done if you're suffering from hearing loss? Now, thanks to science and technology, there are many devices out there that can help people with hearing impairment live a better quality of life, such as a hearing aid. Now, a hearing aid works by amplifying sound through a three-part system. First, you have the microphone that receives sound and converts it to a digital signal. Second, you have an amplifier that increases the digital signal. And the final part is a speaker that transmits this amplified sound into the ear. Isn't it just amazing how much technology can fit into such a small device? Okay, well, we've covered the topics I wanted to talk about today. In summary, we've looked at how our ears allow us to hear, whether super hearing is possible, whether sound can be manipulated into a weapon, some of the common causes of hearing loss, how we test hearing, and finally, some of the treatments that we have for hearing loss. If you enjoyed today's video, why not give us a like and subscribe to the channel. If you're free just now, why not come over to the channel and watch a few more Dr. Stone videos like this. Otherwise, thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one. Thanks.